Hey, what's going on guys? Back out here, as you can see, nice snowy Ohio. So we're gonna get started today on this front clip. And the first thing we gotta do is we've gotta get this clip inside. I'm gonna start up the kerosene heater. We're gonna brush it off, make sure it gets completely dry before we start blasting it today. So a uh, big thanks to Eastwood, was able to pick up one of their uh, abrasive blasters yesterday um, here in Cleveland. So we're gonna put it to the test today. We're gonna do a nice little product review on that. But the goal for this video and for today is to get this front clip blasted and get it in primer. So let's go ahead and get started. I wanted to show you exactly kind of where we're at and all the work that we need to do before it goes to blasting and gets to epoxy and then getting it back on the car. Okay, so I pulled it in here and uh, threw my kerosene heater in the middle of it because as you know, it's been sitting outside and it is coming down out here. And uh, yeah, it was completely full of snow and ice. Not, a, not the best or most ideal situation, but thankfully it was only out there for a few days. Uh, but yeah, so looking at this, as you can see, I mean, you guys remember a couple videos back, this was basically an entire front half of a car that was cut off. So it still had the upper cowl, lower cowl, full firewall, full door pillars. I mean, everything was still in here. <clears throat> so slowly cutting it back, cutting it back, cutting it back and opening everything up. And here's what we're left with. So we've got our torsion bar support here across the bottom. We've got each of our frame rails on each side. We've got our frame supports here that tie into the rocker. We have our inner fenders. We've got our upper supports here on each side. This actually mounts or welds, excuse me, directly to the top of the upper cowl section. And uh, yeah, and as you can see, everything for the radiator um, support here on the front. Now, what we're left with is a whole lot of prep work and a whole lot of cleanup that we still have to do. So first starting off with, I opened up here this torsion bar support area. And as you can see down in here, it's full of gunk, it's full of crap, it's, it's all the, the dirt and mud and everything else from, you know, just being a 50 year old car um, and also with it sitting for, you know, 42 odd years or so. Uh, and then we've also got quite a bit of cleanup here just to do on the old uh, spot weld marks. We're going to clean all this up, make sure it's really nice metal and uh, it is going to be mounted to the floor section um, once we get the floor in. Um, moving on here across the side, you can see kind of more of the same here, but it's just full of clay. Um, originally I thought this was just built up rust. A lot of this is clay and dirt and mud and, and everything else is just gunked in there. So I've actually got to use a hammer and a screwdriver and chisel all of that out. But I really want to have all of that completely cleaned out of here before I move on to blasting it. Um, here on the sides, you can see when I originally cut the rocker sections out, and kind of separating what we have left from what was in the car originally. Just left these rockers on here to make it easier now to get at. You can see here, you can see all the original spot weld holes. We're gonna drill these out really nice and clean like. Make sure that this will be really nice to go on to our new rocker panels that are inside the car. Uh, right here on the frame support, same thing. You can see this rocker section still attached on there. We're gonna go extremely slow, clean this up and take it off of there. Um, this side here, you can see where there's still this firewall section still on here again, really taking our time cleaning it up very, very nice with the grinder and uh, slowly peeling it all off so that way we're left with nice, clean, usable metal that we do not have to replace before we put it onto the car. So originally I was thinking that I'd be able to blast today. I probably got a couple hours here of just the, the prep work, the cleanup work, chiseling all of this out here that's stuck in our, or stuffed into our uh, torsion support here um, and uh, yeah so there's there's still quite a bit of prep to do but let's go ahead and get to it and uh, let's start cleaning it up ready you don't have to have your glasses on Okay, there we go. Good? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Okay. All right, guys, I want to introduce you to somebody special to me, my more attractive, better half. This is Morgan, <laughs> my wife. She's out here helping tonight. She loves being out here, loves helping out with the build. Um, and to tell you the truth, she's a way more badass welder than I am, so I'm happy to have her as part of, a, part of the team. So <laughs> we're going to get to it.
Alrighty guys, it's a beautiful day for blasting today. Perfect weather, it's a little chilly out here, but uh, we've got our front clip all ready and uh, ready to start blasting. So I do wanna show you real quick the progress that we made last night, thanks to the help of my lovely wife. Um, got this entire thing cleaned up. It's completely dried out. Um, it's not snowing today, so that's a, a big difference too, but it's, uh, it's all dried up and it's ready to go. Um, got all of our um, connection points completely cleaned off here. Um, you can see here also on our torsion support, Got those parts cleaned off as well. Um, did take off, you can kind of see a little bit of the remnants here of some of the original spot welds that are on here. Um, did clean all of these up, made them for the most part flush. We'll still do a little bit of surface uh, conditioning here on this, clean these up a little bit. See we got another little one right there, um, but we are ready to start blasting. Got our section here where the firewall attaches, that's all cleaned up. This all turned out extremely nice, not all rotted out like a lot of you guys thought it might be. Can see here on the other side as well the only issue that i did have and thankfully the piece is still good but this upper support piece on the other side it looked like somebody had actually tried um, or had begun to pull uh, this front clip apart and so it actually has all the uh, spot welds drilled out on it but it's really easy to match it up and to be able to put it right back where it was without any issue so i do have that off but we'll blast that separately um, and then weld that back on here at the end but uh the rest of this is pretty much good to go Cannot wait. I've been waiting. I know a lot of you guys have been waiting too for the uh, last couple months to finally get to this point and uh, get this clip um, blasted, epoxied, and, and finally onto the car. So what we are going to do here is I'm going to tip this entire thing up first. We're going to lay it flat on the radiator support vertically so that way I can blast the entire underside before I return it back onto the body cart, finish this all up, and uh, yeah, finish blasting this. Um, did want to show you guys real quick the blaster that I'm using. So this is the Eastwood 100 pound abrasive blaster. Um, as I mentioned before, Eastwood's been a huge help with this build. Use a lot of their products. They're really, really good. They're very affordable, especially for weekend warriors, garage guys like me. Works out really nice. Um, I do have it filled up with a mix of 4070 glass bead. Uh, met with the guys at Eastwood for a little while in Parma the other day here in Ohio. They recommended, uh, they said soda was a little bit um, too light for the, the level of scale and the level of rust that we do have on this front clip. And they recommended we use glass bead on this. Can't wait to see how it works. Um, we'll see how it works uh, through here. Um, did want to point out though, the blaster does come with a hood. It's really, it's kind of a cheapy hood. So go with the, uh, the deluxe blasting hood. I think it's about 45 bucks, but it's a lot better, um, much more durable, um, you know, again, Want to be safe out here, want to make sure that you're not breathing in all the glass bead or soda blast or what have you, whatever you're, you're uh, blasting with. So, got our compressor built up, um, running 90 PSI on this. Do have uh, our mixing valve. We're going to play with it a little bit. You can see here on the bottom, very, very slightly cracked open. A lot of the feedback that I've been getting from people is that these clog up, that they have a hard time running these. So, we're going to put it to the test and we're going to see how it actually works today. Um, and uh yeah let's get rolling okay so i'm gonna go ahead and set up the camera i'm gonna get all my ppe on my gear on and uh and we're gonna get this thing finally blasted so let's do it
Alrighty guys, we are back out here finally. That last clip was about two days ago. Unfortunately, ran into some mechanical issues. I'll tell you guys all about that. Um, but was able to make some really good progress here on this front clip, blasting it. And uh, I'll show you guys kind of exactly where we are and also show you what happened and how we're gonna move forward today. Uh, but we did finish up half of this front clip. It turned out phenomenal. It looks brand new. It looks like brand new sheet metal in here. Um, blasted it. It was pretty much a raw, you know, obviously raw metal um, finish. I did use a wire wheel in some areas just to clean it all up, make sure the surface was really nice for the epoxy. Um, but you can see it, it turned out fantastic. Um, even here, where some of that heaviest scale was, it took it off with ease. This all looks like brand new sheet metal underneath here. Um, only one little surprise, again, not really even a big deal, but one of the spot welds on the top, basically where the support piece ties in, you can see it popped right there. We'll just have to suck this down, weld it up. Not a big deal at all. Um, did finish half of our, uh, well, like I said, half the front clip. We still have the torsion support here to blast, and then we've got this entire side to do. So I will say the Eastwood Abrasive Blaster is fantastic. Using that glass bead, the 4070 mix on this, made quick, easy work out of the metal. Didn't heat the metal, didn't distort the metal at all, but it did pull off all the scale, all the paint, all the rust without any issues at all. It's really, really nice. So again, this is that Eastwood 100 pound blaster with that glass bead mix. So where I did run into some issues though, when I was blasting was with my compressor. So I do have a 60 gallon Dayton. It's a five horse, uh, single phase, single piston, um, or single stage pump, excuse me. Uh, it, it wasn't even close. So if you are looking up this blaster or just in general, you know, bigger tools, bigger air tools, if you have to look up what the air demand requirements are to see if it'll work for your compressor, it's probably time for an upgrade on your compressor. So I was running um, for about three to four minutes at a time to build up to, you know, 90 to 100 PSI and only getting maybe 30 seconds to a minute of spray time out of this. So, you know, I had limited time after work to, to work on this. So, you know, it took me several hours to even get half of it done. And I finished it just before dark, got it in epoxy pretty much at dark and rolled it inside to dry overnight. Um, but yeah, my, my compressor was pretty much smoked after that first day. Came out here the second day and it just took forever to build. So I probably killed my compressor in the process, but thanks to my friends at Eastwood, they did hook me up with a brand new uh, QST3060 compressor. So this is one of their quiet scroll compressors. It's really, really nice. I'm excited to use it today. Pumps out about 12 CFM at 90 PSI. It's continuous direct airflow. So as I'm blasting, my uh, abrasive blaster, I believe, needs around 8 or 9 CFM at 90 PSI. I will be able to blast continuously without stopping, without having to let my compressor build up. It's really nice. I got to test it out last night, so I'm excited. And you guys will get to see it today. So if you haven't checked out those quiet scroll compressors, though, the word quiet only runs about 63 decibels in comparison to the probably 100 plus that my uh, my Dayton is right now, you can actually stand next to it and talk to somebody next to it. You barely hear that it's even on, it's fantastic and it builds really fast. Obviously with that 30 gallon tank, but the compressor is just, I'm in love with it. I can't wait to use it today um, and show you guys how good it works and also showcase how good this abrasive blaster works as well and how quick we're able to do it. So without further ado, let's go ahead, let's get started. Let's finish blasting this thing, let's get it in epoxy. And I'm hoping to weld this front clip on this weekend. So let's get to it.
Alrighty, you guys, as you just saw, we finished up blasting our front clip. So I wanted to show you what it looks like before I put it in epoxy. Um, you can see it did a pretty good job at stripping all of the paint, uh, all the scale um, off of our front clip here. Um, torsion bar supports in a little bit rougher shape. I will just take a wire wheel to this real quick before I start spraying epoxy just to make sure that I can get in there and uh, and get any of the, the rust that are that's in some of the pits. Um, here on the inside, I mean, you can see it's, uh, it's all raw. It's all raw sheet metal um, all the way up to that halfway point. Like I said, I was able to um, basically just get half of the, uh, the front clip done the other day. So with that, let's, uh, let's go ahead, let's get it in epoxy and, uh, and get it drying so we can get ready to weld it on. Alrighty guys, so once again, we are gonna use the Eastwood 2K epoxy primer in black. Um, use this on the other half of the clip. I've used this pretty much on any raw metal parts. And once again, it comes with a little button here up on the top. Pop that button out. And uh, it's basically got, it's, it's got a cylinder on the inside of this. Okay, and so what you do is that you put the button on the bottom side of the container here. It's got a little cartridge that's inside of this container. You push the button in, just like that. And what that does is it punctures it and it mixes it in with the rest of the paint and it essentially becomes a 2K catalyzed paint straight out of a rattle can. You don't have to mess around with mixing paints or anything like that um, or cleaning a, you know, a gun or anything. Pop this, shake it up real good and uh, it's ready to spray on and it's tough as nails and it dries quick even in the cold conditions that we're in. I think it's about 18 degrees right now outside but uh, it didn't seem to, uh, to bother it too much the other day. Um, so we'll go ahead and shake this up start spraying it on. All right guys, just like that, we are done with epoxy paint on this front clip. So, as you can see, it turned out really, really nice. Looks, uh, well, exactly like the other half did, but uh, all one coat now, it's protected. Um, the metal's protected, and uh, as uh, I showed you guys, it's direct metal application with the epoxy primer. Um, I did want to introduce one, uh, one new paint, uh, or one coating to you guys here. It's called the internal frame coating from Eastwood. Uh, you can see it comes with a hose and it, that hose actually has a, a conical nozzle on it and so what that allows you to do is actually feed that hose and that nozzle up into the inside of the frame rails and it has a, like a 360 spray pattern so that way it protects the inside of the frame rail so as you saw i just blasted this i did not get the insides of the frame rails with the uh, with the blast you need to dip it if you wanted to do that um, but this will at least protect the inside of that frame rail it encapsulates rust um, it won't you know rust any further than that um, but it just puts a nice coating on the inside of that to protect it for years to come so the work we have left on here we have a little bit more welding to do probably won't show that on video you guys have seen it already it's the exact same type of stuff that we've done with the upper and lower cowl um, you know a couple things like for example this little tab here just a couple little little welds um, on that to make that good again again be careful with that grinding wheel as you can see here I was not so careful uh, again but uh yeah so just a little bit more welding we got to put this tab here up on the other side um, which again it's got these guide holes you can line everything up no problem um, for some reason that side had already been um, spot weld cutters had already started to uh, take out the other side on this 
um, but it should be really nice and easy to match up. Uh, two little rust holes here that we got to address. This first one being the biggest one. Uh, you can see the uh, internal frame coating in there. So I fed that hose all the way up into there, all the way back down this way to make sure that it was full coverage on the inside. And then there is one additional little hole right there towards the bottom of that frame rail on that side. Um, in case you're wondering, the tarp, uh, in an ideal environment, uh, ideal circumstances, not with uh, 18 degrees, snow, rain, uh, you know, tracking wet feet onto and off of, you can reclaim a lot of that media. And so that was my attempt to do that. Uh, as you can see, yeah, I ain't gonna be able to reclaim any of that blast media um, that's on the ground here, but at least, uh, yeah, it was uh, up onto a, uh, onto a tarp to protect my driveway, but yeah. So, I think that's it. Uh, this is probably gonna wrap it up for today's video. And uh, again, it's been kind of a long week just with the air compressor issues that I was running into, but got that all sorted, got this finished, huge relief. We're just about ready to put this onto our charger. Um, I do have a couple firewall repairs too. I'll probably capture those in the next video and uh, get this baby ready to weld on. So I know you guys have been waiting a while. So have I, because um, essentially this is the front half of the car will be done. So a big step forward in the right direction. I've got fenders, got a hood, got everything. Hopefully in the next video we'll weld this front clip on. We'll put it all up, mock it, and uh, actually have it look like a car again have it look like a 68 charger again. Can't wait. So take care guys. Again, follow me on Instagram. I put a lot of different pictures, a lot of different content on there. Interact quite a bit with everybody on there as well. Um, share your builds, share your pictures, and uh, anything in addition that you think that I should be doing to this or uh, anything that you'd like a little bit more information on, please feel free to leave that in the comments or send me a message. So take care guys. We'll see you next time.